Hi everyone, Midjourney version 5.2 is here. Let's get right into it. There's a lot to cover. First, this is the announcement from David, the founder of Midjourney, that Midjourney version 5.1 was released to try out as a test today. So let's go. The prompt that I'm going to be using to show you the different effects with version 5.2 is this. Minimalism, humanoid, portrait, abstract, bokeh effect, HDR, and I'm using the aspect ratio 19 to 6. And these are the images from version 5.1. I am showing these to you as a comparison. So just take a look and kind of see, you know, if you can notice anything here. Most of these images are straight up in the middle, centered as typical. And then the same prompt, and now this is 5.2. I can see some differences. Most of these are not centered. What is new with 5.2? Kind of rhymes, doesn't it? First, improved aesthetics and sharper images. Then, slightly improved coherence and text understanding. This should indicate that your images will be improved as well because the text understanding is better. Increased diversity, and sometimes you may need to re-roll more than once to get what you want. Sorry, says David. So what this means is that if you are prompting, for example, for a model, but you do not specify a gender, you may get both male and female models. It used to be back in the day, yesterday with 5.1, that most of the time, basically 99% of the time, you would get females if you prompt model. Now you should also get some male models into the mix. Now, of course, the quick fix of this is that you just prompt the gender. Next, the stylized command has been fixed to have a strong effect on the amount of stylization applied to your image. So it's more like version 3. And the command goes from 0 to 1000 and the default value is 100. So let's take a look and see what it looks like in action. First, stylized 250 added to this same prompt. And here are those results. I did reruns on each one of these prompts and then I'm upscaling the ones that I liked the best. Here's stylized 500, and feel free to go back and forth to see what differences there are. Stylized 750. I can definitely see more stylization, if you will. And then stylized 1000. Now, Personal preference, again, you may prefer one stylized over another. I personally like zero or the default 100 stylized with these images, although I do like this one, and this is stylized 1000. The variations just with 5.1 were minimal, so now you will see bigger differences. You can toggle this variation on in the settings, however, you can also just click on the button after you upscale. So let's take a look what that looks like. Here's one of the very first grids that I generated, and I really like the bottom right-hand corner, so I am going to use that for the demonstration purposes. This is what happens when I upscale this image. On here, the bottom left-hand corner, it says very strong. So I clicked on that button, and it's already green because I already clicked it, and this is what the variations strong look like. You can definitely see differences here, and let's take a look and upscale each one of them. And then the variations subtle. Very minor differences here. 
Then we have a new zoom out feature, and I am pretty excited about this. From the tests that I've run so far, these look pretty great. The same thing underneath the upscale, you can select the zooms. So let's just go and jump right into it. I'm first going to zoom out to X. These are the results. Now, had I used a different prompt here, I would see something more than just the blurry bokeh background. And here is zoom 1.5 times. Minor differences in this case. Again, different prompts give you different results. And for example, if you do a more complex scene, for example, interior of a building, a palace, cafe, things like that, you can get much more details and interesting things when you zoom out. Here I'm going to test out the custom zoom. And all I did here was to use a different aspect ratio. And in this case, I used 21 to 9. I wasn't really a big fan of any of these, so I did not upscale them. The last choice here is to make a square. Now, if you start with a square image, then you will not see this as an option. But since I started with the widescreen, I can select make a square. And these are the results here. And the left side has the upscaled version. Now let's look at the new shorten command. This lets you analyze a prompt and get suggestions on what words might not be doing anything and which ones might be key. Here is me having fed my prompt that I showed you earlier into this forward slash shorten, and then I just enter the prompt in there. First, I get important tokens, and it's basically listing the tokens that I used, all of the ones that were in my prompt, which were minimalism, humanoid, portrait, abstract, bouquet, effect, HDR. And as you can see, the effect and HDR crossed out. That means that they do not have any effect whatsoever on this prompt, which means I can just exclude them from my prompt, even if I was just building a new one. Then minimalism and abstract are not bolded, which means that they don't have, at least in my opinion, it means they don't have as much effect. So I can now decide how I want to manipulate this prompt a little bit more, and I can go by the shortened prompts suggestions. Number one is minimalism, humanoid, portrait, bouquet. Now there's four options here. Sometimes you get more as well. Mine was a pretty short prompt. I would not pick number three or four just because it is not exactly what I was looking for. Let's take a look what happens when I use the number one shortened prompt. Here are those results. Now, I don't know about you, but I can definitely immediately see a difference. Something is different here. These as well. Now let's check out what happens with number two shortened prompt. By the way, these prompts, you will have to enter the aspect ratio at the end. It does not automatically add them in. Here is that result. Again, I can definitely see a difference here. Only the first one of these shortened prompts had minimalism in it, and I can see that effect or lack of in these prompts. And the way that you can make a mid-journey prompt less busy is adding the minimalism. And that's really why I'm adding it into a lot of my prompts, because in general, I just like less is more. And here is number three, only humanoid and bouquet. And these are cute, in my opinion. I did not bother to do the last one because it was just humanoid and that would not have been something that I was interested in. Now, please note some additional information. Things may change in the coming weeks with no notice. V5.2 is on by default. That means that you do not need to enter that parameter in your prompt. However, if you want to use version 5.1, you can go to settings and click that particular button. High variation mode is limited to 5.2. That means it only works with 5.2.
And lastly, the new command shorten does not work with multi prompts. All right, so after I went through all of those different prompts and tested what effect each had, I would then decide, okay, which prompt do I now like the best? And here's actually one that I came up with that I changed a little bit from what I had, but I still kept minimalism and I still kept abstract. I just took out HDR and then effects. And this is that result. And I really like this result. However, I also like the initial result that I had from the same prompt that I used in version 5.1. So these would be the ones that I'd like to use for whatever I was going to use them for or play with further. And here's just a cute one that I liked. Thank you so much for watching. I am so excited to play further with 5.2 and bring you insights and information and tidbits that I find. 